Welcome to the nave and the baptismal font. And we get the word nave actually from ship language. A nave is the bottom of a boat. And so back in the day, many of the churches were built in sort of a opposite shape of a boat, right? And we call the church the bark of Peter or the boat of Peter because while we're in the boat, we're safe and we continue on our journey towards God across the waters of this world. But if we leave the boat, we're often in peril and there's a fear that we might uh, get hurt or drown. And so it's a message that we should always try to be in the church because when we're in the boat, we're totally great. And so you, whenever you come to church, are in the nave. You're in the main part of the church, which is the aisle and then all of the pews. But right in the middle of our church, is an extremely important place called the baptismal font. Now font means a spring or a source. And baptism, of course, means a spiritual washing. The first sacrament that all of us receive, it happens oftentimes when we are just babies, but sometimes much older. And in it, our, our original sin is washed away we are made members of the body of Christ, children of God, temples of the Holy Spirit, all of that beautiful stuff. And we are basically put on a path to reach our eternal happiness in heaven. Now there's a bunch of symbolism about the baptismal font that we have here. You can see some of the beautiful mosaic work in the middle, right? Blue symbolizing the water of baptism, and then gold symbolizing our royal dignity because we are baptized as priests, as prophets, and as kings or queens, right? And so each of these identities is built into us. We become priests, prophets, and kings by our baptism, and so we should never give up those wonderful gifts, those wonderful privileges. The baptismal font has eight sides to it. That's eight, it's octagonal. And the reason for that is because baptism represents new life. And how many days of the week are there? Right? If you said seven, that would be correct. And so the eighth day is the first day of that second week, also known as the first day of a new creation happening. So Jesus rose from the dead on the eighth day. He rose from the tomb he came up out of the waters of death and rose to new life. And so, in a very similar way, we, when we are baptized, rise from the waters of death into new life in baptism. So it's an incredibly important sacrament. I have not gotten to celebrate a baptism here in this font because of the COVID virus, but I cannot wait to be able to celebrate in this beautiful baptism font. So maybe a part of our church that you haven't noticed, unless you were looking around, are these three niches for the three holy oils. Now, oil has always been used in our church and even in kind of the broader world as a symbol for healing, as a symbol for restoration and strength. Nowadays, there's this very popular trend that your parents know all about using essential oils, right? Because they have all these healing properties. Well, the church knew this, right? She knew what essential, what oils were essential way before essential oils were a thing. And so she has three oils that we use at different stages of life for different purposes. So, and sorry, we are, we're missing a beautiful, like lit niche, but you know, we're doing it on this day and we just gotta keep moving, right? So first off, we have the oil of catechumens. Now this oil, is the very first part of the sacrament of baptism, either for infants or for adults who are joining the church for the first time. It's a sign of belonging to this rank, this group of people known as catechumens, those who are preparing for baptism. Now, obviously for infants, the period of their catechumen is extremely short. It's only about five minutes because we slather them with oil, and then two minutes later we baptize them, 
and then we put a whole another oil on them. And so it's very short, but that meaning is still there, being a part of a group, being a member of a family. <clears throat> the middle one is called sacred chrism. Sacred chrism is used for all the most important things in our church. <clears throat> Excuse me. I will need a cough drop after this, as is clear. <clears throat> Children are baptized with sacred chrism. Priests are ordained on their hands with sacred chrism. Bishops are ordained on their head with sacred chrism. Altars are consecrated by rubbing a whole lot of sacred chrism. And then finally, and most coolly, we'll talk about this later, bells, that's right, big church bells, are rubbed with sacred chrism during their baptism. So it's a sign of, um, of being given great strength and power. When we anoint the babies, we say, we anoint you priest, prophet, and king. Just as I talked about the baptismal font, right? Priest, prophet, and king is all represented by that sacred chrism, setting you apart, a sacred anointing, a sacred gift, of your baptism. And then finally, at the end of life, we receive another gift, another strengthening, the oil of the infirmed or the oil of the sick. This happens when uh, your grandparents or your great-grandparents get sick and they are close to death. The priest will come and he will anoint their foreheads and their palms with the oil of the sick. This is meant to give them great spiritual strength and healing and helps them to appreciate the last days of their life with a greater sense of peace and calm, knowing that the God who anointed them with the sacred chrism at the beginning of their life is there to anoint them with the oil of the sick at the end of their life. So you can see these three oils, even though they're kind of tucked away in a part of a church, are extremely central to our lives as Christians. <clears throat> 